When we talk about Vesper theory, we're talking about the molecular geometry or the shape of our molecules. So these are what covalent compounds look like when they're bonded together. Molecules don't exist in 2D space. They're 3D structures. So our Vesper theory helps us take our 2D Lewis structures and turn them into 3D Vesper theory or molecular geometry structures. So VESPER is an, is an acronym. It stands for Valent Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. So valent shell being the most outer energy level, so we've talked about valence electrons. So they're the electrons in that outer shell, that valent shell. Remember, electrons are in pairs, and then since our electrons are negatively charged, they're going to repel each other. So we're talking about the electron pairs in the valent shell, and they repel each other. And when they repel each other, they're going to push as far away from each other as possible until the bonds, until the electron pairs are as far away from all the other electron pairs or bonds as they possibly can be around the central atom. This ultimately results in our 3D structures because our electrons are going to push against each other until they're as far away as they can be. Since we're going to be trying to draw these structures on 2D paper, we're going to try and take a 2D Lewis structure, visualize the 3D molecular geometry, and then turn that back into a 2D drawing, we have to kind of look at some of our guidelines for drawing. When we draw bonds, so all three of these represent bonds between two atoms. When we draw just a normal straight line, angled, however it's going to be when you draw your structure, that means that bond is in the plane of the paper. So if you were to hold your molecule up, it's going to be in the same plane as the paper. If you draw it as a wedge, that means it's coming out of the paper. So if you're holding your molecule up, it's going to be coming, that atom is going to be coming towards you. And if you draw a dotted line, that means it's going back into the plane of the paper. So it's going away from you. And we're going to look at examples of all of these. So we're going to focus on five different shapes, and they have different um, shapes depending on how many atoms are around their central atom. So if you have two terminal atoms, or two atoms around your central atom, you're going to have two possible shapes. Your first shape is linear, and that looks something like this. So this is carbon dioxide, CO2, and if you see, my atoms are in a straight line. If I were to hold them up against the board, they're all in the same plane, so this is a linear structure. An example of a bent structure is water. So water has two electron pairs up here on the oxygen. They're not in my little model guy. But you can see it bends so that those electron pairs push away on those bonds. And this is called bent. That makes sense. The atom is bent. So we have linear and we have bent for our molecules that have two terminal atoms. If we have three terminal atoms, we again have two different options. Now, the trigonal pyramidal is the only one I have an example of. So this would be NH3. Um, so we have our nitrogen in the middle. We have our three hydrogens. If you notice, it's in a slightly 3D shape. All of these guys are bent slightly away. There would be a lone pair of electrons up here pushing away on our um, other bonds. So when we draw this, we can imagine this bond is in the plane of the paper. This one up here is coming out towards me, so it's drawn with a wedge. And this one back here is going away from me, so we draw it with a dotted line. The other option for three terminal atoms is if you don't have a lone pair of, an electron, lone pair of electrons, that would be like BH3. Boron doesn't need all eight, it doesn't need an octet. Um, it would be trigonal planar, so it would be the same shape except flat instead of um, sitting up on its three little legs. It would just be flat kind of like the linear um, structure. Our last one we're going to look at is tetrahedral. And that's if you have four atoms, or four terminal atoms, or four around your central atom. Um, and tetrahedral looks like this. So this is CH4. So if we imagine, if we hold it up to our drawing, so here's our structure, here's our central atom. These two are in the same plane with the board. So it's a straight line up and a straight line out. This front one over here is coming out towards me, so I draw that with a wedge. And this one back here is going back into the board, so I draw it back with a dotted line. You always want to find two atoms 
or two bonds that are in the plane of the board so that you can draw those with straight lines. There are other shapes as you start to get into expanded octets and things like that. We're just going to focus on these five. So we have our linear and our bent structures if you have two terminal atoms. You have the trigonal planar and the trigonal pyramidal if you have three terminal atoms. And you have the tetrahedral if you have four terminal atoms. Note the bent and the trigonal, plane, or trigonal pyramidal both have lone pairs of electrons. That's what's causing those shapes to be bent. They're planar or linear only if they don't have any lone pairs of electrons.